What's going on, FUD Nation? We have an amazing episode for you today. The man once called Bitcoin Jesus, now occasionally referred to as Bitcoin Judas. The man himself, Roger Veer, the face of Bitcoin Cash. He's here on FUD TV to give us a big update. Please bear in mind, the point of this interview is not to attack Roger. It's not to rehash these debates that have been going on for years. If you want to see some great debates with Roger Veer about everything going on with Bitcoin Cash, there are plenty of those. Maybe check out the one with Charlie Lee. However, the point of this interview is really just to get an understanding of what Roger is up to from one of the crypto insiders, one of the power brokers in the industry. What is he doing? What is he seeing? What's exciting to him? And what can we be looking forward to as we enter a new bull run and the rules for cryptocurrency are getting completely rewritten? So bear that in mind that the point of this is really just to understand more and get a sense of from his vantage point, what he sees as the most important innovations right now. Now, as a developer myself, I find this very interesting, and I hope you guys benefit and enjoy the chat we're about to have. Strap in FUD Nation, we have a great piece of content for you today. Here is my exclusive interview with Roger Veer. You know, what I want to start with and what I really want to highlight here is some maybe some different sides of Roger Veer that people uh, don't always get to see. So, you know, I wanted to start a little bit with your background uh, and especially your sort of early entrepreneurial uh, history uh, leading up to the time that you found Bitcoin. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your early entrepreneurial background? Sure. So I started uh, two successful tech companies in Silicon Valley where I was born and raised uh, selling networking equipment and fiber optic transceivers. and. Uh, sold them to happy customers all over the world. And it was really fun through doing business. I got to meet people all over the world and have friends all over the world. And it was really a fun seeing how people come together to cooperate, to, to, to make the world a better place. And then one of the biggest pain points for that were these international wire transfers that would take a couple of days and this and that. And sometimes the wires would bounce back. And then when Bitcoin came along, I realized, oh, people are absolutely going to start using this as money. And uh, so I wanted to get involved promoting that full time. So my involvement in Bitcoin has been the, the second phase to my career, the first phase was selling uh, computer components, and now cryptocurrency is the second phase. So Now, uh, I, you mentioned in one of your other interviews that you were a big or uh, an avid player of Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah. Now, obviously, a lot of people don't know this, but Mt. Gox, one of the, you know, the original Bitcoin exchange, actually stood for MTGOX, Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. I'm sure you knew that. Um, what was you, is that how you found Bitcoin? Is that how you got involved with the Bitcoin community or is that just a happy coincidence? Just kind of a happy coincidence. And then, so Jed McCaleb, the founder of Mt. Gox before Mark Carpellis got involved, who then went on to found both Ripple and Stellar. I don't recall having met him for sure, but very, very, very likely we were at the same Magic the Gathering tournaments and pro we probably did bump into each other back when we were uh, that age playing Magic the Gathering. And then 100% for sure, I did meet the CEO of Kraken and became friends with him back when we were teenagers through our interest in Magic the Gathering. We would be at the same Magic the Gathering tournaments, and uh, Jesse and I became friends through through that. So there's there's definitely an overlap with Magic the Gathering and, and cryptocurrencies. What is uh, your relationship with Jed McCaleb, if any? Uh, I haven't talked to him much for for a while, but uh, I was this the seed money to help start uh, start Ripple and his original idea. This was in 2012, so the price. Yeah, so Jed originally approached me in 2012 when the price of Bitcoin was maybe you know two or three dollars each, and he said, "Hey, Roger, you know I, I like what you're doing in the space, but I think that Bitcoin mining is wasteful. It's using all this electricity. I have an idea on how to do Bitcoin without mining. Mm -hmm. uh, are you willing to to invest in this?" And I said, "Okay, let's give it a try." And so I put up the seed money to to help start Ripple there. And uh, you know, as we know, what today Ripple is the third biggest cryptocurrency in the world. Um, so really, really uh, interesting to see that side, so but I almost for sure I crossed paths with Jed, you know, a decade plus before that when we were both playing Magic the Gathering. So, so uh, with regards to XRP, uh, what are your feelings towards XRP and uh, do you hold any still? Uh, I, I definitely hold some XRP, but uh, I have a nice, well-rounded portfolio of cryptocurrencies. I hold a little bit of all the, the top cryptocurrencies, but uh I don't know a whole lot about what Ripple is up to these days or exactly what's going on with it. But, uh, uh, you know, I, any wise investor holds a well-rounded portfolio and uh, Ripple is one of those. So, Are you bullish on payment rails in general, XRP, Stellar? 
I think the entire point of cryptocurrencies was to use them as money. And that kind of has been derailed with the BTC version of Bitcoin, but uh, it's still clearly on track with uh, things like Bitcoin Cash and then uh, maybe maybe Ripple and Stellar as well. But uh, the, the cryptocurrencies I follow the most closely are, of course, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Ethereum, and then uh I've kind of given up on the BTC camp. I feel it's so toxic with their their censorship and attacking anybody who actually wants to use it as money. So, you know, I, I wish them good luck with whatever they want to do other than the censorship and the, the personal attacks and the trolling. Uh, but I'm much more interested in a lot of the privacy coins. So the Zcash, the Zcoin, the Monero, uh, you know, those sorts of things are, are interesting to me as well. And then, of course, Cash Shuffle on Bitcoin Cash, I think, is amazing, which is something that used to be on BTC that then disappeared when the blocks became full. So CashShuffle.com is a way to have privacy on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Uh, right now today that's available so that i find uh, a really exciting project and i'm eager to integrate that with the bitcoin.com wallet as fast as we can as well so do you do you feel that innovations as far as privacy coins payment rails uh will ultimately be made redundant by uh improvements to the bitcoin or bitcoin cash blockchains whereas you know there could be uh enough functionality privacy functionality where those things would become uh, unnecessary or do you think these things will coexist we don't know I think is the real answer. And, and and if you're not sure, then, you know, hedge your bets and hold a little bit of the privacy coins and a little bit of the coins with the biggest market share and, you know, spread your risk around. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So, and uh, I don't know either. Sounds good. It's and very honest and transparent of you. Uh, so I guess what I think I wanted to dig into a lot is you are a, an OG, if you will, of the scene. You've seen probably a lot of conversations and a lot of back, you know, a, a lot of behind the scenes action in this industry that I think a lot of people aren't necessarily privy to. And I wanted to sort of elucidate, bring to bring to the foreground here, um, maybe some knowledge about the rest of the space before we dive into the uh, Bitcoin cash side of things, uh, of, of projects that you find very exciting, uh, things that you think people should be uh, very much tracking. Um, and things that you're just excited about in general that you think are, are worthwhile innovations in the space. Yeah, well, I, I think the big news today is the Flexa app um, that mm -hmm. allows you to spend BTC, BCH, Ethereum, and then Gemini dollar mm -hmm. at like 30,000 plus locations across mainly the US. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes I get to know about things in advance, so I had a clue that that one was coming. But uh, there's other things that you know catch me completely off guard when they launch. But uh, it's really exciting to, to see actual usage in commerce uh, taking place, because if you don't have actual usage in commerce, then you're just speculators speculating on future speculation of speculators. And that's not a long term sustainable uh, model. So we need to have actual usage in commerce. So great job to the Flexa team for, for rolling that out to 30,000 shops. And uh, we have another similar rollout uh, coming here in Japan as well with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Cash based tokens. Uh, keep an eye on Bitcoin Cash based tokens. I think people don't realize just how quickly that ecosystem is about to, to, to pick up. And in fact, if you go and get a, a Bitcoin Cash token wallet, so you can get the Electron Cash SLP wallet or the Badger wallet from badger.bitcoin.com, post your SLP uh, address in the comments of this video, and I'll send you guys some free Bitcoin Cash tokens, and uh, we'll see what comes of it. And and when you say Bitcoin Cash tokens, are you talking about tokens that are built uh, on, on top of the Bitcoin Cash blockchain? Exactly. And there's a whole ecosystem really starting to develop with big major uh, tokens, including stable coins about to be launched and uh, other really, really fun tokens are, are being launched on top of uh, the Bitcoin Cash blockchain because the transactions are fast, cheap and reliable. That's what people want are fast, cheap and reliable transactions. And of course, uh, censorship resistant is nice as well. So. Uh, what do you make of, uh, do you believe that this sort of the altcoin world uh, has a future? Or do you believe that uh, in the end it is a bit of a distraction? Because I know a lot of people uh, debate, you know, a lot of, you know, staunch Bitcoin adv advocates believe that altcoins can be a distraction. I mean, some of the more extreme uh, Bitcoin advocates. Or do you believe that these token ecosystems will find a home, will find uh, their way and, and a purpose, or at least the good ones? Uh, the good ones, yeah. So if something's useful, people are going to use it. So ask yourself, is this particular altcoin something that's useful? And if the answer is yes, well, then people are going to use it. Um, and so I think long ago when Bitcoin had you know 99% market share and the transactions were fast, cheap, and reliable and tokens were starting to be built on top of it, I think Bitcoin had a really, really good shot at becoming – the, by far the dominant player in the market and had a really good shot at becoming like the you know the cryptocurrency for the world and when the blockstream guys intentionally crippled tokens on top of BTC and intentionally made the transactions you know slow expensive and unreliable 
and literally cheer for the fact that they are slow, expensive, and unreliable and talk about popping the champagne to celebrate for it and talk about how they can't wait for the fees to become a hundred and a thousand dollars per transaction. That destroyed its first mover advantage and it destroyed its usefulness in commerce. And at this point, it's just coasting on its own coattails of of being called Bitcoin and having the name recognition that people like myself uh, helped build up for it. But it's Bitcoin in name only. It doesn't have any of the actual usage characteristics that made it popular to begin with. Uh, and so I'm much more bullish on things that are actually useful for people in commerce. And, you know, of course, Bitcoin Cash is at the top of my list, but there's a, a whole bunch of other ones out there that I think are are more useful than BTC, other than that they don't have as big of a network effect or as much name recognition as the BTC version of Bitcoin. But, uh, you know, my, everybody knew MySpace and nobody knew Facebook. But when the user experience became slow and unreliable on uh, MySpace, people switched to Facebook. And before MySpace, it was Friendster. And when Friendster became slow and unreliable and expensive in terms of time to use it, people switched to MySpace. And don't think the same thing is not going to happen with cryptocurrencies because it will. Well, actually, you know, it was it's pretty interesting looking at the moratorium of MySpace. It's uh, it's also the ability to build your own applications on Facebook that that led to a huge surge in activity there. Uh, whereas MySpace, uh, owned by Rupert Murdoch at the time, they built everything in-house. And so that was uh, another uh, crippling effect. And not that Bitcoin uh, builds everything in-house, but uh, obviously there are other blockchains that are much more well-known for being built upon, easy to build on uh, than Bitcoin. Though I see those uh, tides starting to shift. You see a lot more announcements of, of products that are being built on now Bitcoin Cash, which I'd love for you to talk about a bit. What do you think are the most exciting innovations going on with Bitcoin Cash? I think it's exactly what you said, is enabling all these developers to build whatever the heck they want on top of it. And so at Bitcoin.com, we're working really hard over at developer.bitcoin.com, providing all the infrastructure tools to enable developers to build whatever they want on top of Bitcoin Cash. So we have uh, SDKs for Android, iOS, uh, JavaScript, where you can do anything you want with Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash tokens. Uh, we're trying to make it as easy as we possibly can so we can harness you know, millions of developers around the world to build useful things that people are going to use. And when something is useful, People are going to use it. Cash is clearly useful based on the number of people that are starting to, to use it. And there's all sorts of program groups chatting about all the stuff they're building. And it's really a, really impressive seeing all this that's coming together. So I guess that kind of brings me into the next segment, which is, of course, uh, how do you see Bitcoin Cash? Do you see it as a success so far? And if so, what do you think have been its most successful uh, parts of the project? I think it's clearly a success so far. So it is the only coin other than BTC in the entire world that has full support on blockchain.com, full support on Coinbase, full support on BitPay, full support on Bitcoin.com. It has more support than any other coin in the entire world other than BTC. And if you look at the characteristics that made Bitcoin popular to begin with, Bitcoin Cash has all of those characteristics. BTC no longer does, but the way the fork happened technically the BTC branch of the Bitcoin fork got to bring along all of the infrastructure that had been built up over the previous eight years, all of the businesses, all of the, the brand recognition, all of that. And the fact that Bitcoin Cash has as much traction, as much usage, and as much adoption, as much excitement as it has going today is a huge success. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind, if BTC's camp continues to limit the block size to one megabyte and intentionally try to make the on-chain transactions slow, expensive, and unreliable, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Bitcoin Cash will surpass BTC in terms of market cap around the world. The only question is, how soon will that happen? It might take a year, it might take a decade, but it's going to happen if the transactions on BTC continue to be slow, expensive, and unreliable, and Bitcoin Cash transactions continue to be fast, cheap, and reliable. There's absolutely no doubt for anybody that's paying any sort of attention. Do you believe that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash uh, can su successfully coexist? They already are. So the, the proof is in the, in the pudding right there, yeah. And how would you describe the relationship between them, you know, today, five years, 10 years down the road? How would you describe a, a healthy, uh, you know, a symbiosis between them? Yeah, I, I, between the actual communities, I don't know how healthy it is. There's a lot of hate and animosity between the two. So the Bitcoin Cash camp is furious with the BTC camp for having stolen the Bitcoin name and stolen the, the Bitcoin ecosystem when it's not the Bitcoin that was described in the white paper and not of us got involved with to begin with and the b and the imposed censorship across the entire discussion platform it's uh for bitcoin in order to achieve that and the btc camp is furious with the bitcoin cash camp because they feel like we're the ones that are stealing the bitcoin name and we're calling our project bitcoin cash when it's not the, the real version of bitcoin which is absolutely ludicrous if you go and look at the under 
fundamental characteristics that made Bitcoin popular to begin with and that described what Bitcoin was in the original white paper. It's very, very clear that Bitcoin Cash has more of those characteristics than the thing that everybody's calling Bitcoin uh, today is. But uh, I don't know if that animosity is going to die down anytime soon. But, uh, so, so, so but competition leads to better results, right? Both mm -hmm. camps are competing as hard as they can to make what they think is the best product for the most people around the world to use. And and you know, look at all the great innovations that are happening because of it. So the competition is a good thing. So I do want to draw a distinction, and and you know, as as someone who's followed your uh, your speaking for you know, I guess several years now, I you know, I don't doubt that you believe every word that you say uh, about Bitcoin Cash. And so my goal here is not to get you to admit anything or or say, oh no, I've just been uh, you know making all this stuff up. But I do want to draw a distinction here about the communities versus the actual usage and utility over time. Yes, the communities, especially these early communities, have had. Uh, definitely bitter disagreements. But as far as the long term place of cryptocurrencies in society, if we want them to catch on as sound money uh, for my grandma and for, you know, your distant cousins in other countries, uh, we would have to have them understand and begin to use them in, in, in a seamless and user friendly way. Um, how do you think that those people will start to interpret, you know, in five, 10 years down the road, the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash? And, and do you think that there's any danger of confusion there for these new users uh, with having the, the multiple uh, chains of Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Um, I don't think that there's a danger of confusion. People are going to use whatever's the most useful to them. And so whatever you call it, they're going to use the thing that's the most useful to them. So in the US, everyone's using US dollars because that's the most useful. In Singapore, everyone's using Singapore dollars because that's the most useful. And we don't worry about, oh, is someone going to confuse a Singapore dollar with a US dollar? No, they're going to use whatever's the most useful in the ecosystem. Going to use whatever cryptocurrencies are the most useful for them. Uh, what's your opinion of uh, Lightning Network and the current development for Lightning Network? I wish them good luck. Um, it's not usable um, today. Maybe it will be someday. Uh, there was this Lightning Torch going around on the internet, and everybody was so excited on Twitter. Hey, I got the Lightning Torch. I'm sure like 99% of they got the Lightning Torch didn't just some custodial wallet that's no different than somebody using PayPal or Bank of America to send some money from one person to another yet. They're bragging on Twitter, yeah, I got the lightning torch. You didn't do anything. And you you understand so little of what you did that you don't even understand that you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything more than looking at a web page. Yet all these people are so excited about it. So um, I don't know, good job to the lightning team on the marketing hype. But uh, as far as a useful product that puts people in control of their own money, it's it's at least 18 months away. And for those that follow the space closely, that's a, a bit of an inside joke there because they've been saying it's 18 months away for like four or five years now. So. Well, yeah, as I understood, Lightning was supposed to uh, be fully functional last summer and, and uh, you know, everyone's everyone's rooting for it. But obviously things are moving very slowly, uh, though there has been a, a tremendous amount of growth in the capacity. Does the success of Lightning Network uh, in your mind help or hurt Bitcoin Cash? Uh, anything, everything is competing in the market. So like the success of the US dollar takes away usage from Bitcoin Cash. So like, and I, I'm i not an opponent of Lightning Network. I'm not an opponent of BTC. I'm a fan of anything that works. And if it's useful, people should use it. And and so I don't care which coin it is, if you want people to use it. But I spent an entire day to set up a Lightning which the users in control of their own funds like it takes all day to set up a lightning wallet where you're in charge of your own funds it takes 30 seconds to do the same thing with bitcoin cash so like uh what a difference yeah and um so i guess let's let's finish off with some things that you're very excited about for bitcoin cash obviously bitcoin cash has been extremely high performing uh in 2019 so congratulations to you and the bitcoin cash team for uh really delivering i think uh, uh nothing more than a shocking performance here of you're certainly outperforming bitcoin and uh you have what looks like a lot to look forward to if you're just looking at the charts um what do you see as you know uh a and i'm not sure how much you're allowed to say here but what do you think it would be an optimal Optimistic target for you for the Bitcoin Cash uh, price value uh, at the end of this year? Depends on how much adoption in actual commerce we get to do. So we're working on a really, really big deals with uh, the marijuana dispensaries in the United States. They're having a really hard time with banking. Correct. Uh, nobody yeah. likes to deal with slow, unreliable transactions. Even though the marijuana dispensaries can afford the fees on BTC, 
the transactions are unreliable too. So like uh, uh, even even if the if the fees were free or if the fees were the same on BTC and BCH, one network's reliable, the other's unreliable. Well, people are going to use the reliable network. So we're partnering with these giant marijuana businesses to have them doing all their payments through Bitcoin Cash. And so I think that's a really, really big deal. And then we're also partnering with all sorts of uh, businesses here in Japan to bring acceptance of two cryptocurrencies at these thousands of shops across Japan. One of those cryptocurrencies is a Bitcoin cash based token. The other is Bitcoin cash. And I think that's a really, really big deal seeing so much stuff happen in actual commerce where we're making it useful for real people in real lives. And uh, I saw a demo last night, which was just a fantastic idea. And I don't know why, why nobody thought of it before or why I didn't see this before, but almost for sure we'll build this into our Bitcoin.com wallet. The way it works is when you scan a QR code with your phone for like a, a BitPay checkout address or whatever payment amount, you can set in the settings if it's less than $50 or less than $20 or whatever amount you want. The instant your phone scans it, it knows to just sign the transaction and pay it no matter what. It doesn't ask for additional confirmations or anything if it's under a certain amount. And we were, we were testing that out last night at a bar here in Tokyo that accepts Bitcoin Cash. It was significantly faster than paying with a credit card. It was significantly faster. So that's an example of making cryptocurrencies useful in actual commerce. And that's what's going to drive adoption long, long term. And I'm glad you brought up the uh, the credit card example because I think that's every you know that's how we pay in the modern day. Cash, uh, I almost never have cash on me. Always using my card. Uh, do you believe that acceptance at individual retailers is in any you know maybe Amazon or something big like that? But do you believe that that's actually going to drive uh, increases in adoption as much as uh, the actual just ability to use a credit card anywhere Visa is accepted? Uh, and if so, what is your purview or what is your opinion as to when that could possibly happen as to literally using your, your Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin cash or cryptocurrency wherever a credit card like Visa is accepted? Because uh, to me, that seems like the real uh, killer application here is I, I can go anywhere and just swipe and not think about it um, because obviously individual retailers are great. But in the end, if I constantly have to juggle between accounts, I'm still not having the, in, uh, the improved product experience. Yeah, we're, we're wanting to roll these out to you know thousands or tens of thousands of, of companies all at the same time by integrating directly with the point of sale system. So one at a time is fun, but that's not how you change the world. You have to get in on these platforms and convert you know thousands or tens of thousands of merchants all at the same time. And, and we're busy doing that. And but if you do have you know your your loan shop that you want to convert, we have an awesome app already called Bitcoin Cash Register. It's available on Android right now, and I think it'll be out for iOS this week. I have the test flight version of my phone right now. Uh, it allows anyone anywhere to start accepting Bitcoin Cash safely, and you can have the funds forwarded right to your own private wallet or right to an exchange to convert, or it makes it super, super easy. And uh, it's open source too, so if you're a developer and you want to poke around with the code and repurpose it for something, uh, take a look. It's called Bitcoin Cash Register, and it's a, a really fun app. So what would you leave as a, as a, you know, words of wisdom for the newbies in the space, which I'm sure there will be more and more coming into the space with the increase of Bitcoin price, which has always been, uh, you know, the best marketing uh, device for this industry. Uh, what would you leave as, a, as some words of wisdom to the new, uh, you know, investors and participants in the space as far as how they can, uh, you know, best take advantage of the space? Certainly you have done uh, very well for yourself here. So, yeah, my, my advice is don't buy into the tribalism look at what's useful and use the things that's useful. So when I first got involved in Bitcoin, everybody said it was a stupid scam. And I didn't listen to them because I looked at it and said, this is useful. People are going to use it. And today, lots of people on the internet say Bitcoin Cash is a stupid scam. But I don't listen to them because if you look at it objectively, Bitcoin Cash is amazingly useful. So my advice is don't listen to other people. Think for yourself and use the things that are useful and uh, whatever cryptocurrency that may be. Do you think uh, there's ever a day where Bitcoin Cash is um, uh, has more value per token than Bitcoin? Uh, I would be stunned if that doesn't take place at some point. So yeah, absolutely. I think that day is coming. All right. Well, you heard it yourself. Bitcoin Cash one day to overtake the king BTC. Thank you so much, Roger, for your time. Really appreciate you having, having you here on the channel. And hopefully we can get you back soon for an update in a couple of months. I'd love to. Thank you.
Well, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I did. If you enjoyed it and you have any comments, leave a comment in the comment section below. We're going to check back in with Roger in a few months. So if there's anything you wanted us to talk about that we didn't get to talk about, please hit us in the comment section below and we'll make sure to put it on our list for next time. If you enjoyed this video, throw a like. If you're not subscribed to FUD TV, I encourage you to hit that sub button and click that little bell notification as that way you'll be made aware whenever I put out new content. As usual, I'm Elio Trades. You're watching FUD TV and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.